So uh, let us all welcome, no, with a round of applause, Professor Herman Joseph Kraft. Um, I suspect I'm the first person to show a map today of the Southeast Asian region, the ASEAN region. No, I'm sure the geographers will love me for this. No, um, but uh, basically this is the Southeast Asian region, which is to a large extent, no, um, already synonymous with the ASEAN region. We there's a tendency to to interchange, no, yung usage na yon. No? Kumusta sabi natin Southeast Asian region, kumusta sinasabi natin ASEAN region, no, and simply because all of the countries that are actually uh, geographically located within Southeast Asia, no, um, uh, until of course Timor Leste was established, no, um, uh, uh, is in uh, uh, is a member of ASEAN. Okay, of course, like I said, the ASEAN region now, technically speaking, is not uh, does not correspond, no, uh, completely with with Southeast Asia with the uh, establishment of. Uh, 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 Timor Leste. Now let let's let me be you know let me be pedantic for a while. No, um, and and uh, one of the things that we need to actually realize, no, is that the ASEAN community that we're talking of in 2015 is very much different from the ASEAN, no, when it was established in 1967. Okay, um, magkaibang magkaibang po italo. Eh. Hindi lang dahil sa mga membro, no. Uh, ang pinaka basic na pinagpagkaiba niyan ay yung objectives, no? Nung ines nung ginawa po ang ano, when when ASEAN was established in 67, okay? People like to talk about the Bangkok Declaration and sabihin natin yung Bangkok Declaration na kalagay doon ang ASEAN no was established because of no, just three things, right? The idea of uh, economic cooperation and cultural exchange, no? Um, uh, and social ano, interaction, okay? Um, one of the things that you will notice there in the bank declarations, there's nothing you know, that makes reference to the idea of political and security relations. Now, ang, ang, ang language that ginagamit doon is the maintenance of regional peace and stability. Okay? Regional peace and stability. Now, that's, that's not necessarily the same thing as talking about the idea of security per se. Right? Now, why is that important? Because one of the things that need, needs to be emphasized here is that when you talk about regional security then, okay, um, the idea of, regions, uh, sorry, of uh, regional stability, it was again connected to the point made by, um, uh, by Dr. Bautista earlier on. You're talking about 67. No, ano yung paradigm? Tanya, dami natin natutunan kay Dr. Bautista, eh, di ba? Ano yung paradigm ba ng period na yun? You're talking about development as the paradigm. No? But development in the context of nation states, right? The idea is that states, or the main reason why states exist no, is to push no, economic development that would benefit their own people. Pero ang tutok nun, no is collective. You're talking about the nation state. You're not talking about individual persons. No? In terms of, ang, ang, ano niya, it's the collective that's actually seen no, as being the object of development. Now, why is that important? Because basically in that context, no, the ASEAN states then saw themselves, no, the states themselves, as the agents of, no, of development itself. Right? So which means that um, when you think about the idea of, you know, of, of, uh, uh, of, of uh, development during that time, okay, it was always seen in the context of nation states you now being the ones responsible for development and being the object itself of development. Now, why is that important? Because, pag titignan natin ngayon ito, papasok ngayon tayo dun sa idea ng stability. Okay? Regional stability was seen not in terms of different states actually coming together in alliances, no? in order to actually uh, uh, counteract no, a threat from the outside, but was seen largely in terms of the idea of how do you reinforce the state's capability to push development. Okay? And the main, the, main, uh, no, the main objective behind, or the main method that was actually utilized was you know, the idea of establishing ASEAN, no, um, not because of economic, uh, no, not because of economic cooperation per se. No? ASEAN was not established in the same way as the EU, no? parang iniisip natin magkakaroon ka ng isang economic bloc. No? Ang purpose ng ASEAN, as far as development was concerned, was each state wanted to make sure that the international environment no, was peaceful so that they can concentrate on their own development projects internally. Right? So ASEAN was important no? 
primarily from a political standpoint, so that the ASEAN member states no, could actually concentrate on their respective development projects. Okay? Kaya pag titignan ninyo yung sinasabi kanina ni Yusek Bala yung, uh, yung Treat on Amity and Cooperation no? at saka yung Bangkok Declaration. In fact, sa lahat ng mga, mga ASEAN declarations, one of the important things that you will find is emphasis on national sovereignty and non-interference. This is part of it. No? Walang pakialamanan, may kanya-kanya tayong mga development projects. Okay? That's why it's quite interesting that when you take a look at the developments leading to and the rationale and objectives behind the establishment of an ASEAN community in 2015, no, those original objectives have changed. No, we're no longer talking. Ando pa rin ang non-interference. No, you look at the ASEAN Charter, it's still uh, a, 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 uh, uh, one of the important norms no, of ASEAN. Okay? But now, the emphasis is on the idea of cooperation. Okay? No, kaya meron kang ASEAN Economic Community, may ASEAN Social, social Cultural Community ka, meron kang Political Security Community. Okay? That was what the Charter was all about when it was actually established in 2007. Okay? It was to institutionalize cooperation among the ASEAN states, no? to go beyond the idea of just you know, letting different ASEAN states do whatever it is that they need to do in order to pursue their respective development projects. No? Um, that's one. The second point that has to be emphasized is this second point here. Okay? Um, originally, we're not, uh, they were talking not of ASEAN 2015. They were talking about Vision 2020. Right? The idea of establishing an ASEAN community, the target was supposed to be 2020. Okay? But in Cebu, no, in 2007, I think it was, no, they decided that kaya kaya natin gawing 2015. So, no, inabante nila yung deadline at naging 2015. That's why we talk about 2015 as a deadline now. But the point that has to be emphasized no, is that the second aspect of this full project behind an ASEAN, uh, an ASEAN community, aside from institutionalizing cooperation, was the emphasis now no, on the idea of caring and sharing societies, meaning to say ang emphasis ngayon was supposed to be on the people. Okay? On the people, supposedly. Okay? So from nation states, from the idea of a state-centric no, um, or, an, or an association made up of states uh, uh, whose objectives are very state-centric, supposedly, no, big nga nag-shift siya over to, uh, 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 to the people as a target of whatever needs to be done. Okay? Um, so if you take a look at those two things, Ito po yung mga bagay na in-emphasize nila kung ano ang mga kailangan na changes within ASEAN. So, I was asked to talk about the governance aspect, no? And these are the things that, that were being discussed, no? As far as the need to actually establish an ASEAN community was concerned. And this was related to the idea of the charter itself. So, unang-una yung non-compliance. Kasi voluntary nga ang ASEAN. When it comes to, if you look at ASEAN between 1967 and 2007, when the charter was actually established, no, ASEAN was quite interesting in the sense that it made no real demands on its members. Okay? The assumption was that members will, at their comfort level, apply or in enforce, implement whatever was agreed upon okay, by the ASEAN member states. Okay, so walang mga emphasis na kailangan by the state, you know, that only started okay, when the ASEAN free trade area was actually established. May mga schedules kung saan kailangan yung mga tariffs ibababa na. No? But that was the only time. Otherwise, all of these declarations, no? ano yan? Um, uh, it was up to the different states to determine when they think they can actually in implement. No? Uh, uh, what was there. Now, with the charter, the idea is that meron na tayong enforcement mechanism. Magkakaroon na ngayon ng, uh, magkakaroon na ngayon ng uh, uh, rules on compliance. No? Um, pangalawa, no? recommendations on strengthening the secretariat. No? So ito yung institutional elements ngayon ng ASEAN. No? Um, like I said, the governance elements no, was at the regional level. Okay? The idea was to strengthen no governance mechanisms by making uh, ASEAN more rules-based and therefore 
no, uh, with greater emphasis on the idea of compliance to whatever, whatever those rules are, no, and that also includes no, um, strengthening whatever institutions existed. Okay? And so that would also mean no, restructuring ASEAN so that it would be more proactive. Okay? Instead of just reacting to what was going on, no, there would be plans now. You're talking about visioning. Eh? Right? So, important thing is what will the vision, you know, again, going back to what Dr. Bautista was saying, how do you operationalize the vision? Right? So, that was the idea behind, uh, uh, behind the whole thing. No? But, next slide. Now, the whole thing was pushed not only by developments within the ASEAN states, but also in terms of relations no, that ASEAN had with other countries. Okay? Number one was, of course, the emergence of China. Now, what do you do with an economically strong China, right? So the individual ASEAN states no, would not be in a position to compete with China. So the idea would be to come together no, and create a more competitive uh, 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 region. No? Next. Okay. And then, of course, the need to rationalize. No? Because by 2007, you had so many no, different kinds of uh, organizations no, that ASEAN was actually leading or uh, 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 pushing, no, that people were talking about no, an architecture already, no, a regional architecture, whatever that means. No, but basically, parang may bahay ka na madami mga pader at saka mga bubong. No? Pero yung bahay na yun, you're really talking about different kinds of associations that are interrelated and overlapping. Now, you need to make, uh, make sense of them, to rationalize them. So the idea was, and we need nothing, no? Uh, 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 we needed to rationalize those things, no? Um, and of course, no, um, being compelled to meet, no, what were then being recognized as emerging issues. And later on, I will talk about this in terms of the emerging security issues within the region. And the emphasis here would be on what we now refer to as non-traditional security concerns, no? So, katulad kanina yung mga sinasabi na about the issue of um, uh, SARS, no, uh, uh, and of course pandemics, no. Um, dun lang tayo nagsisimula, but you can also move on to national uh, the idea of addressing, no, uh, um, uh, disaster relief uh, uh, arrangements and, and, and all that, no. But the, the the notion was that these issues are no longer things that can be addressed by individual states alone, no. Kailangan na talagang magkaroon ng mas ma uh, mas malakas na cooperation among the states, no? Yes, please. Okay, so the idea was to strengthen ASEAN integration, push it, no? Uh, and then in the hopes that, no? We already heard the reference to ASEAN centrality, no? Uh, earlier on. What does that mean? In fact, this is something that is part of what ASEAN talks about in the charter. Now, the notion that ASEAN plays a central role no, within the region. And as far as security is concerned, this is important because ASEAN centrality in political security terms means that it's ASEAN that manages regional security and stability. Right? So you don't rely on no, the big powers like China or the United States not to dictate what's going on no, as far as security in the region is concerned. Okay? Because that will lead to what international relations we refer to as balancing no, uh, conditions, right? So basically, strategically, that might lead to no, uh, greater uh, uh, possibilities for conflict. We want to avoid that. So ASEAN no, can, be, can play that role of manager no, uh, of, of regional security and stability okay? as a they talk about it as an honest broker, no, in a sense, right? So uh, ASEAN is trustworthy, no? Uh, can be can be seen by all the players within the region as 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 a uh, as an association that plays no favorites, so to speak, right? So that was the idea behind the whole thing. ASEAN centrality, greater cooperation, no, will lead to greater uh, um, uh, 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 political stability within the region. No? So that's basically the framework that was actually working, working there. Okay? But let me bring back something that I was mentioning earlier on. No? In all of this, ang hindi nalilimutan is the idea na yung security framework ng ASEAN is now increasingly switching over to, no, uh, to emphasize no, a more people-oriented notion of security. 
Okay? So that, yun nga, no, all sectors of society, regardless of religion, regardless of gender, no, will actually be uh, 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 protected, no? Um, and will be will have a space no, within the process of integration. So what does the charter or what did the charter then emphasize? No? As far as governance and, polit uh, and, and political security is concerned, these are some of the more important aspects of it. Number one is the commitment to democracy. Okay? That's in the charter. And then if you look at the blueprint for the, uh, for the uh, ASEAN people, uh, sorry, political security community, no? um, it's actually repeated. No? The emphasis on a commitment to democracy, no? the rule of law, good governance, no? and the respect for the protection of human rights and fundamental freedoms, which leads to the second point about establishing no, a human rights body. That was what Yusek Pala was talking about as the ASEAN Intergovernmental no, Commission on Human Rights. Now, you might wonder, bakit ini emphasize nando sa title yung intergovernmental? No, because the idea there is that, one, it reflects the structure of ASEAN itself. Like I said, ASEAN is not the EU, right? ASEAN is made up of states no, that consider themselves as the, uh, uh, the ones who are actually responsible for uh, or who retain sovereign powers, okay? Sa EU kasi, no, meron kang ano ng shared sovereignty between the region and the member states, right? In ASEAN, it's the states who are sovereign. All decisions, no, actually emanate from the states themselves. Okay, kaya nga para pagtinig na yung structure ng ASEAN ngayon, no, the most important decisions are made by the leaders, no, acting together. Okay, um. So, ang ano, ang ano natin doon is the idea of intergovernmentalism as the abiding framework within ASEAN, okay? So, the establishment of bodies, no? Uh, the idea that all member states are obliged to take all necessary, again, kung titignan nyo ito, it's very voluntary, no? Obliged to take all necessary measures to effectively implement the provisions of the charter and comply, no, with all the obligations of membership, right? So, again, it's being left to the members to actually do this, no? So, walang... Ang ASEAN doesn't really have uh, or has, has doesn't have an extensive uh, capacity to compel no its members to actually abide by whatever decisions no have been made or to abide, uh, to 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 talk uh, to uh, to uh, to implement no whatever those decisions are no okay but in the end no what the charter wants is a more rules based no, ASEAN. So, kaya nga parang when you talk about the idea of what is going on and the demands made by the Philippines with regards to the West Philippine Sea issue, no, the idea of rules-based no, governance is really central to the whole thing. No?